Hello everyone, hello, and it's another story time. Oh yes, oh yes. Um, yeah, I'm waiting for the duration to set up. Do, 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 do. I found where that app went. It got retitled and re-owned. There we go, the duration popped up. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was looking at the camera all sus like it was gonna happen. Oh yeah, it's totally not going to happen. Alright, let's grab out this book. You guys see my biscuits and gravy. Now, let's begin with this story. Chapter 2. Desire. The starting point of all achievement. The first step towards what you want. When Edwin C. Barnes climbed down from the freight train in Orange, New Jersey, more than 30 years ago, he may have reassembled... Uh oh, he may have resembled a tramp, but his thoughts were those of a king. As he made his way from the railroad tracks to Thomas Edison's office, his mind was at work. He saw himself standing in Edison's presence. He heard himself asking Mr. Edison for an opportunity that's been highlighted. That he saw himself standing there. To carry out the one consuming obsession of his life a burning desire to become the business associate of the great inventor. Barnes' desire was not a hope, it was not a wish. It was a keen, pulsating desire which transcended everything else. It was definite. Because he made it definite. The desire was not new when he approached Edison. It had been Barnes' dominating desire for a long time. In the beginning, when the desire first appeared in his mind, it may have been prob probably was only a wish, but it was no mere wish when he appeared before Edison with it. At that point, it was an action. A few years later, Edwin C. Barnes again stood before Edison in the same office where he first met the inventor. This time, his desire had been translated into reality. He was in business with Edison. The dominating dream of his life had become a reality. Today, people know Barnes and envy him because of the break life yielded him. They see him in the days of his triumph without taking the trouble to investigate the cause of his success. Barnes succeeded because he chose a definite goal, placed all his energy, all his willpower, all his effort, everything back of that goal. He did not want to become uh, uh, the partner of Edison the day he arrived. He was content to start at the most menial work. As long as it provided an opportunity to take even one step towards his cherished goal. This next part is highlighted. Five years passed before the chance he had been seeking made its appearance. During all those years, not one ray of hope, not one promise of attainment of his desire had been held out to him. Let that sink in. He waited a long time. To everyone except himself, he appeared only another cog in Edison's business wheel. But in his own mind, he was the partner of Edison every minute of the time. From the very day that he first went to work there, it is a remarkable illustration of power of the definite desire. Barnes won his goal because he wanted to be a business associate of Mr. Edison 
more than he wanted anything else. He created a plan by which to attain that purpose, and he burned all bridges behind him. He stood by his desire until it became the dominating obsession of his life, and finally, a fact. When he went to Orange, he did not say to himself, I will try to introduce Edison to give me a job and of some sort. He said, I will see Edison and put him on the notice that I have come to go into business with him. Dang. He did not say, I will work there for few months and if I get no encouragement I will just quit and get a job somewhere else he did say I will start anywhere I will do anything Edison tells me to do and before I am through I will be his associate he did not say I will keep my eyes open for another opportunity in case I fail to get what I want and the Edison organization. He did say, there is but one thing in this world that I am determined to have, and that is a business association with Thomas A. Edison. I will burn all bridges behind me and stake my entire future on my ability to get what I want. He left himself no possible way of retreat. He had to win or perish. And that is all there is to the Barnes story of success. A long while ago, and here we go into the main story, a long while ago, a great warrior faced a situation which made it necessary for him to make a decision which ensured his success on the battlefield. He was about to send his armies against a powerful foe whose men outnumbered his own. He loaded his soldiers into boats, sailed to the enemy's country, unloaded the soldiers and equipment, then gave them the order to burn the ships that had carried them there. Addressing his men before the battle began, and he said, You see the boats going up in smoke? That means we cannot leave these shores alive unless we win. We now have no choice. We win or we perish. And they won. Every person who wins in any undertaking must be willing to burn his ships and cut all sources of retreat. Only by doing so can one be sure of maintaining the state of mind known as a burning desire to win, essential to success. There you are, guys. That, that was the first story of today. We'll have another one before we go to sleep tonight. So I hope anybody listening that benefits, and uh, I hope, if not, that you keep listening, and maybe in the future I'll have a story that does benefit you. Either way. Um, I got some food to eat, so see you guys soon. Yeah.